Okay. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is um, first show uh, at the end of the summer, beginning of the fall, or something like that. Um, and um, we thought we'd check in with Guru. Guru has been doing some things um, since the spring, I guess, um, changing things up. So we titled the show What's New with Guru. But we also want to kind of get real practical here and, and talk about. Um, by the way, somebody has background, which is fine. But if we mute you, don't take it personal. <laughs> I think that might be me uh, for the time being. We're just wrapping up here, but. Uh. Well, well, you know what, Tim? Keep talking then, and so you'll you'll. So so we did a show. We actually I I forget when it was, but it was I think in May or June, and and it was one of the only two shows ever that didn't that. Um, that Google Plus somehow lost. So I'm sorry about that. But um, so we're recapping, but we might have more stories to tell today. So welcome, um, Tim. Great, Timothy Burke um, yep. from Guru, and you're the lead something there, at Guru. Do you want to introduce yourself <laughs> and tell us why there's noise in the background and what you've been doing? <laughs> well, I thanks so much for for bearing with us. Um, we, uh, my colleague Andrew Windham and I, um, just wrapped up a uh, four hour, um, four individual hour back to back sessions uh, with the Redwood City School District. Um, they are making big efforts to roll technology out in their district and. Um, Kind is that of reached California out. California or where is that, this? Yeah, that is right in California, right in our backyard um, from Palo Alto. Okay. And they're quite an interesting district. They have um, kind of um, ec socially and economically quite diverse ac across the district, and are doing all they can to get teachers um, excited about technology, using it, but but harnessing the direction in which the district is going to take. And uh, we see on their roadmap, uh, Google Apps for Education planning to be rolled out soon and actually their their sister district so to speak is Sequoia Union High School district which just fe re recently featured um, the Google Apps um, summer conference at the Sequoia Union High School and um, you know there were a handful of other ed tech startups in, at the conference today um, Cl click uh, clickers was here um, Padlet was here uh, Leah um, mm -hmm. got, got to connect with them um, other folks from Ed Canvas and Edmodo were here and um, really just kind of showing the teachers what's out there and how uh, it can be used and what are the implications for the classroom. So we had a, a great group of about 30 teachers each session, uh, very open mindset um, and some you know, not with the hardware. The hardware certainly is not something that the district has, and that I'm finding is consistent ac across the other schools and districts we talk with. But the teacher's will and desire is there, and so they're going to be looking by any means possible to integrate technology with the limited computers that they have, with their own personal devices, and um, even relying on connections with the public library for students to be, um, you know, creating content, making, so to speak, digital tool, uh, using digital tools at the library. So it was a great uh, pleasure to work with them, and we're going strong, feeling good. I'm sorry if um, I might be out of wind from time to time, but I have the... Or the opposite may happen, too. You may just keep talking. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So... But so Timothy, could you um, Tim? Sorry, could you um, I don't know uh, try to describe Guru within the context of all that? Like, um, and <laughs> well, we're going to jump you right. You know, this isn't uh, an, you know first time you've met Guru show perhaps. But if it is, uh, you could say a little bit about that. But but how does it um, sort of fit within all the other I don't know vendors that a school might jump on to? Is that a fair question? Yeah, that's, that's a that's a great question. I'd say um, Guru makes it easy for teachers to discover digital content, whether within our search engine. Um, add their own digital content from web tools that they're using, from uploading their own slideshows um, as PDFs or um, Word documents to Google Docs or tools like Crocodoc, um, and then organizing that all into what we call collections, which essentially are, are learning playlists um, that they can use to teach in the classroom. Um, they can assign them to students. They can use in direct instruction. They can. Um, kind of go along the lines of blended learning and have a station set up in their classroom. Uh, they can use in small groups when they're differentiating. Um, and Guru, you know, is really a, a, a platform to bring all of those other web tools together. Um, we call ourselves a search engine for learning, but we're really much more than that. And 
um, I'll let you guys in, in your exploration and, and use of it kind of discover what Guru means to you. Um, but I do know this, we are a nonprofit. We're dedicated to um, honoring education as a human right and doing all that we can to level the playing field for students across the world to have access to high quality education. And our goal is that teachers are open and willing to create and share those resources in that kind of pay it forward model uh, and, and help us serve in that mission. So that will never change. We never have any plan to become a, a you know an add-on or a freemium type site that um, needs needs um, you know to make a, our, our answer to our our business investors as opposed to our bottom line and those are teachers and so we're constantly iterating uh, iterating upon the tool what, what you'll see today is kind of guru relaunch it's the guru 2.0 um, which we're thrilled about and it's just so much more intuitive and um, the, the product roadmap is finally coming together and um, and and if it's not working for teachers we want to hear from you directly and we want to build and customize it to meet your needs very cool, and and let me let me also say that um, the reason I like Guru, um, and you know, I, I I have I have some quibbles with your timeline, as you know, <laughs> but <laughs> and, and stuff. But 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 the, in in the end, um, what what I wanted to say is that Guru for me is is what's happening right here. It's like a, a community of people who work together, and Tim, um, you know, it's been great to um, have you and invite you into that community. As we work together, um, and on that tip, maybe we could do a couple more personal connections here. Leah Jensen um, visited New York. I don't know when that was, December, something like that, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, turned me on to Guru. That was I think the first time I had uh, actually thought about it very much. Um, <laughs> and and then in the meantime, you've become the IT lead in Oakland. Is that right? Do you want to introduce yourself? And <laughs> wow. Say there you go. <laughs> um, so. My name is Leah, and um, I'm in Oakland Unified School District in Oakland, California. And um, I'm, for lack of better terms, instructional technology. There used to be a team of us. I'm the lone ranger left. Um, well, so you became a committee, right? <laughs> I did, and you know, I I kept advocating to have to have other teachers join me. And when I realized that wasn't going to happen, I searched outwards. So really, you guys are my team. <laughs> and so this is instructional technology. And Chris, you're now on the team. So um, anyway, um, yeah, so I, I kind of consider myself a district agitator um, and trying to bring um, to to get people and, and Paul you really you inspired me so much when I visited your class um, and what you were doing and and really thinking in terms of not about the tools or or the or you know web tools or digital tools or um, hardware tools but thinking really in terms of how teaching and learning has changed so much and how Google and YouTube in the hands of kids and really what is our role of teachers as teachers and um, and what are we as guides um, and what does it mean to prepare kids essentially to thrive um, in this information age so um, I continue to push those buttons and um, love to have conversations about that so and you, that's essentially what I do yeah can you and Tim talk a little bit about the project that you I think you have a project starting in your district just to, sure. just to introduce the idea I mean, we can get into details later but yeah. yeah, Tim, you can go ahead and then I'll jump in. Yeah, so Lee and I have been working since last spring um, to create a digital kind of player or platform in which these Common Core aligned units can live online. Oakland, um, up until a few years ago, was handing out, and by, by no means uh, there are districts across the country doing this, but big binders that would essentially sit on teachers' Uh, shelves and, and just collect dust and never be um, iterated upon in the actual use and so Leah in her discovery of Guru um, pulled together a, a team um, looking to explore and how they can take these uh, what we call Common Core State Standards aligned uh, units within Guru and, and put them um, out there and, and kind of publish them out there for, for other teachers in Oakland to use and build upon. So we've been doing that project. Um, Lee, it's kind of spun off to doing even more 
um, what it's like to teach and learn in the digital age. So we did some professional development this summer around that. And um, I've also had a, a, the pleasure of joining Leah in her work with, with Joe through the Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age group. And um, participated in, in some of those ideas happening and hope to continue that work this summer, uh, excuse me, this school year, as the students are out um, pushing the, the next frontier with technology and um, integrating that into what essentially could be a digital portfolio of their work. And so when they're out applying to college that they can look back as and, and point to exemplars that show their learning in action. And uh, that's some, some of our work. There's also some other stuff up on the horizon um, with more high touch kind of pilots in certain schools. But um, it's been a great thought partner. The Oakland's right in our backyard as well. And mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of great stuff. And, and just forward thinking teachers like Joe and like leaders like Leah that are, are really agitating um, and getting others mm -hmm. interested in that agitation. And Leah, I'll let you speak to your, the survey that you guys just did. And <laughs> Uh, yeah, we did a, um, a district-wide tech survey. We just got all the data back on it, exploring the network um, and hardware and software. And then really, which I thought was the most interesting, was teacher and principal, we said, readiness. But really wanting to know where they were and their thinking. Um, and overwhelmingly, you know, they all um, see the need, one, for needing more professional development, but really thinking in terms of professional learning and more customized and offered in way more mediums than just face-to-face. -face. Um, and, um, of course, we need an, the, we can't do anything unless we have the network, and we are, we're really lacking in that. So there's a lot of advocacy right now to prioritize the Measure J bond that was passed last November. It's very political. Um, there's a lot of groups... Um, like just to get retrofitted for earthquakes is once their hands on the pot and really all of that money could be used to do that so it's like wireless or earthquake ready <laughs> you know? um, so we're, we're faced our, our whole district is faced and I know other districts are too with these with these issues of um, really trying to think outside the box in terms of infrastructure and is this going to be is this something that we can't do alone as a district and need to look outside towards our city um, you know, thinking there's also a lot of thinking going around about schools being hubs for neighborhoods to provide internet access. Um, so not just within that school, but for that neighborhood. And so we talk a lot about disparity, um, and it's really about um, access um, across the board. But back to specifically Guru, um, the group of teachers that we worked with um, over the summer, we uh, did some surveys prior and then during and after. Um, getting their feedback and overwhelmingly they wanted to they, there's this need to have a community of learners and Guru is such a great um, medium for that because they left that three days and built some awesome uh, collections some you know ranging from how to's for Google Docs, Google Drive and some more actual units that students will be able to I'm sorry collections that students will be able to interface with and um, and they really got in, dove in, and were adding videos and their own PowerPoints and building PowerPoints and putting them up or adding PDFs and then really getting crazy with the third-party applications like Crocodoc that you can assimilate. And I think that was thanks to you, Paul, that brought in Crocodoc. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, they haven't sent me a roy royalty check yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, on I got one. You didn't get one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just hey, playing. No, I love Crocodoc. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. But, so, but, but I wanted to ask you, though, is, is, is that, is, um, was there any issue around sharing work? I mean, were people just jumping in and saying, oh, I'd love to share work with everybody? or Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think if you set the context, you know, people, people want it. When I found that, you know, Guru doesn't have a host of uh, K through three, K through four content in there, and so when a teacher was like, "Yeah, all right, you know, I could, I can add this myself," um, that's great. But he was bought into the idea that, all right, the the, the work is worth it if I know that other people are going to use it and make it better. Mm -hmm. And um, we, you know, we kind of set the context though around the open educational resource movement and and the idea of of iterating upon each other's work and the fact that not everything that you put out there is a final draft. Teachers are always revising and iterating and and 
tweaking their lesson plans year after year or lesson after lesson to reteach. And so teachers of all people kind of get that. And um, they were they were by all natures in their heart of hearts want to um, make education accessible for everyone across the world. So it's something that um, didn't need, need too much um, persuasion. A shift for me, I took a workshop in Boston from Marco Torres, um, who has a, a, a website called um, Alice Media, Alas or Alice. Do you, have you heard of Marco, Marco's work, Paul? A little bit, not so much though. Go ahead, yeah. Um, but some of the shifts in thinking that really mar marked me and then to, I took back to our three-day workshop was this permission that there, there does, you know, really getting away from outcome of this final product and that things are in beta form and we're just creating prototypes and building on them all the time. And that really sunk with me, you know, that this is a permission we have to give our kids too in this shift, that we can talk about process and process sometimes is even more important than the outcome. And um, so that we discussed that uh, during the workshop and, you know, I said I think Google Gmail was beta for a until last year, <laughs> so um, right. and and Guru I think is still beta, right? So. We are, we are. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good so, scapegoat for right. the bugs that come up, but yeah. But, so I really, but, yeah. Yeah, Joe, that reminds me of your work um, that I got the opportunity to sit in and, and uh, sit on a panel of the students culminating presentations, and um, <laughs> there were many of them who had to go back and go back and present again and present mm -hmm. again and. Um, but they didn't gr grump or, or you know gripe about it that they knew it was part of the, the learning process. Yeah, they did. Sure. Yeah, you go ahead, Paul. No, I was just going to say there was an earlier moment that would have been a perfect segue to introduce you to, but ah. <laughs> which was the citizenship pro project with the National Writing Project. Is that right? Um, is that the same project? Are you giving me more work, Paul? What I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that. Am I? I? What are you talking about? Edda. He's talking about the Edda. Oh, Edda. This, oh, civic engagement stuff. Yeah. There you go. That, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so that's... Can you, um, yeah, explain what that's all about, and then get back to whatever you'd like to get back to. Okay, Introduce so, yourself first. You oh, start on Monday, by the way, right? So I do. I'd start I do. September 9th, so I'm still in summertime. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying to eke out the last few hours. Um, yeah. So, the so Joe Paraiso, I teach. I have an all-senior and AP teaching line this coming school year. Uh, with a class uh, that I'm looping with as well uh, for half of my line. Um, and that's AP Literature? Is that AP Lit, mm -hmm. uh, Which, yeah. Chris, you're doing as well. I just want to make sure. Woohoo! Uh, I do AP English Language, but... Oh, English I did language. that last. Okay, I don't know the difference. Go ahead. <laughs> huge, huge, huge. Huge, okay. No. Um, and my EDA work, my Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age work was... Uh, about all the blogging that I do as a routine in my classroom and that was all last year. I've been doing it for so many years but last year was when I really started uh, focusing on the audience component and the feedback component to the students. So blogging really as a conversation. Uh, this year um, I'm taking that work and now focusing again on the audience but having the students generate try to generate their own audience for their own work and so one of the goals for mm. The work we're doing is that uh, what they do for their civic. So they do a senior preachers project with me, um, and th it is a focus on civic engagement. Social equity is the theme, and uh, the goal is that s something they produce from this project actually goes viral. Whether it be a blog posting, uh, a resource share that they do, something just they garner enough of an audience somehow that that a lot of people look at their work. Uh, because I did a lot of that driving of the audience last year for them, setting it up. It's a lot of work. Um, so I'm going to see, I just want to see what the kids could do with that because I feel like a lot of them were able to do it individually, uh, have people look at their, their, their writing um, and offer suggestions, and they did it themselves, but that was a small handful. Um, so there's that. And then in terms of Guru, you, having the students, I'm not sure, we're still, I'm still playing around with it, but they have a field research component. And they also have, uh, in terms of collecting, I have repeating topics every single year uh, or related topics. And what I find really awesome is when I have like judges like Tim that come in, they are first-time judges. But I have many judges that are former and students. And this is for the senior This is for the senior project, so the senior research that they do. And at the end of the year, they present it via webinar or live. Mm -hmm. And so which I we're have... Gonna do on, which we're going to do on... Um, 
on Hangouts this year, right? Woohoo! Yeah, awesome, <laughs> oh, awesome. Cool. God, okay, Ooh, my yeah. heart just went crazy. Um, okay, <laughs> so, uh, so it, it, what we find is that the topics are repeating simply because they're that, um, they're so, it, it just, it's, it, it's a cycle of inequity that it happens over and over again, uh, whether it be through, like I say, police brutality or human trafficking, et cetera, et cetera. So what's, mm -hmm. So they're, they're looking at and researching these issues, but then, then I'll get next year's group, and they're doing the same thing, and they're also interested in that. And then the next year, and it's the same thing. And so it's not about um, that they're copying. It's really about this is how hot the issue is for them. Uh, but I would like to use Guru as a place where the kids start to store that those really great resources that they're using in their research so that I can have succeeding generations of students be able to access that access those you know best best sources. Just, yeah. a, just a quick feedback to Guru, um, and I've said this to Tim already, but I'll say it publicly now. What, what you just mentioned is English, right? <laughs> so yes. so when, when somebody like I Guru think. thinks about what is the what is the content of an English class, yeah. it's, it's hot topics, right? <laughs> or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, themes that keep coming up in, in mm -hmm. kids' lives when they do um, interest-based research projects, mm -hmm. which, you know, you don't necessarily think of that as English content, but I think for, to my mind, that is what you just described. But so, and I don't know if we want to mess with Guru too much. But I, I've suggested to, to to you another time that maybe there could be, you know, an organization called uh, Hot Topics or something, you know, yeah. within Guru. But well, yeah. I'm excited to share a potential solution to that, and would love <laughs> your all feedback today. Um, awesome. I've been learning a little bit more about where our roadmap. Uh, might be going and uh, have an idea with our, in collaboration with our product developer that could could help um, point out those resources and, and allow teachers to tag them as hot topics or project based learning or mm -hmm. buzzwords mm -hmm. and then and then search accordingly to those filters. Mm -hmm. On some databases, they call them opposing viewpoints, like mm -hmm. on our Gale database. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Those kinds of things. So cool. Joe, did, did I interrupt you too much though? No. Or did you okay. I could go on forever, so, Paul, so <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I didn't hear you say youth voices, but I'm hoping youth voices is gonna be part of this too. Uh, yes? yeah. Uh, yeah. So, these okay, are the these okay. the yeah, These are the, the youth, classes. The, this is the class that did youth voices last year. So. I know, and they will okay. Good. Oh yeah. But but even as you were talking earlier about the going viral, to my <laughs> experience, if I could push back on that a little bit. Push. Is 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 that I don't think numbers matter a whole lot of no, for no, no, a kid. No. You know, what's important is that, that when they sit down, there's a niche that uh, a group of even three, five kids from somewhere else who they know is going to read their work. Yeah. Because um, then they start writing for that that mm -hmm. audience. It doesn't have to be a big audience. I mean, it's no, nice when it goes viral. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, that that's what I mean by going viral is that it gets uh -huh. bigger than the audience of. So you know, they do have maybe two to three to four people that'll read their work, and I guess I'm more mm -hmm. so. I want them to figure out how to generate their audience themselves. So because mm -hmm. you know, my audience came from you know a school of ed at Mills College, and it was you know, and and that. But I'm saying I would like them to actually you know, tag their posts on their Facebook or share it that way so that they are reaching certain people that, that are only mm. their people, you know, so uh -huh. we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That, if, if your courses are organized around essential questions, that has been an, an essential question that we've used for English, too, cool. which is how do, you get a, how do you get people to listen to you? <laughs> Which, if you if you break that down, you know it, it becomes you have to have something that people care about. You, uh -huh. you have to have something that is, you know, presentable mm -hmm. and interesting and engaging. And 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 the other thing though is that you have to have something that um, people know you're going to return to. Like mm -hmm. you have to become known as somebody who says interesting things about a particular topic mm -hmm. over time, right? Which right. is tough in school, but. Anyway, that's, it's certainly a great question. Chris Sloan, <laughs> sorry, let's jump you in here and say okay. hello, and then we'll try to get back to... I know we're, there's a whole show of introduction, right? What can I tell you? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's okay. uh, so my name is Chris Sloan. I teach English and Media in Salt Lake City at Judge Memorial. And uh, we're actually back in school. Today's my second day. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so we're sweating it out here. <laughs> uh, but it's good. Uh, but one of the things that um, I teach English and media. So in one of my media classes today, 
uh, we started um, talking about what's probably going to be a, a group research project uh, here, and it's really important, and I think uh, the mainstream media has done an okay job with it, but it is air quality in our valley here, and, and in a lot of the western valleys, um, you know, it gets cold and the, war or the cold air is trapped in the valley with all of our um, pollution from our vehicles and uh, coal-fired plants and everything. And I don't think, um, you know, even our professional media has not quite told the story well enough because the problem keeps getting worse. And oh. so, um, you know, we're looking at how we're going to tell that story or, or how we're going to, you know, begin to tell that story. And so, you know, I was looking at Guru, your air quality resources and that kind of thing. So I guess I come at this conversation from a little different angle, and that is, like, um, you know, um, Leah and Joe, you've talked about how you've already done a lot of stuff with Guru, and I look at it like I've dabbled a little bit. You know, I did some stuff with my students last year on Guru, but uh, as a new teacher, and you've got this new, you've made some improvements. So, um, like, what would you say to somebody like me who, I think it's going to be a group project, and I think we want to build some resources, yet some resources are already there, so how I see this as potentially a place where this would be where we'd house our research to try to educate people. So my question is, you know, how do you go about thinking about using Guru in a group research kind of place in the classroom? And let's just say Andrew can answer that as well. Andrew Wintum is here with us as well. But go ahead. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a great next uh, transition to the rest of the show. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> you know, I, that, oh, that's a great question. Um, and Andrew, do you want to give a quick introduction? I guess uh, we're oh, both in the same sure. room. I just kind of snuck in here halfway through. You might have seen me lurking before, behind Tim earlier in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I've been quietly lurking on the my end. We're actually in the same classroom. I can see him over there. Mm -hmm. My name's Andrew. Uh, I work with Tim um, on the community side at Guru, I'm the community manager here. Um, so I work with Tim setting up things like what we did today, professional development, um, also you know community outreach, trying to get like-minded individuals like this group right here together um, to talk about how we can use tools like Guru to take them to, you know, to apply them in the classroom. So, um, I'm sorry, what was the, the question okay. that... Uh -huh. that First, you could ask a research project. Right. So, uh, you know, like as a teacher who's not mm -hmm. really familiar with Guru, um, so, like, how do I go about uh, using Guru is the question, but, you know, with a little context, you know, my students will probably be doing a lot of research around a common topic Mm -hmm. And so some of the resources exist on Guru, I see, and, and yet I would imagine we'll have some new resources uh, that we'll discover too. So, you know, how do you go about thinking how to use Guru in that situation? Mm -hmm. Great. Well, if you guys wouldn't mind, um, I'll jump into a uh, screen share of Guru and, um, cool. and kind of sh show you some overview, and then we could even think about the implications together for that as, as a group. Um, if I share my screen here, let's see. Can you guys um, see a desktop now view? Yeah. Uh, yep. Do you see? You just need to choose the right screen. Yep, you're good enough. You see Guru? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so, Paul, the interface looks pretty similar since I've um, last presented uh, at at the TTT last spring. Um, but we do have kind of um, some new feature walk through and I'll just come back to we still have as Leah mentioned this beta mode right here um, <laughs> it means that there are still things to come and, and I, I look forward to sharing some of our, our roadmap with you but uh, Chris I, I, that's a great question it's one of my favorite use cases um, as well as is putting Guru in the hands of students and seeing what they come up with and what they can do so um, I'll just walk through kind of a, a quick kind of search we'll, we'll look at uh, So if I go uh, a search bar, air quality, I might come up with a handful of resources uh, around air quality. Um, I see here Beijing air pollution. That might be pretty relevant for me as well as I want to show what kind of air quality uh, to the extreme 
well, it looks like when it's gone wrong. Um, here's a, a simple quiz uh, that was created with another tool that's out there called ProProf um, around, um, looks like it's an air quality quiz. And so if I come to Guru and I'm discovering resources that I like, um, I could go ahead and add them and I could kind of bookmark them. And this is something that the mm -hmm. students can go and do. They can use Guru as a search engine that they're going and finding things and if it's relevant to them, they can bookmark it and they could throw it into a collection. Uh, as Leah said, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it could be a, just a repository where you kind of store. So I'll call it. So uh, when you... Go ahead. When you type, it, it shuts your sound off. But go ahead. It's fine. Oh, <laughs> just wanted to point it's, it out. it's okay. Okay. It comes back. So on I there. typed in air quality research. I don't need to tag it to a grade or to a course. I can. I can. I can call it eleventh uh, grade, or um, I can select the course that it might align to if I see it in here. Um, maybe it's nurse science. Maybe uh, we'll put under envir environmental science. Sounds more like it. Um, and then this visibility setting, I could set it to public, meaning that uh, you guys can go now and search that air quality research uh, collection that I create. Or I can make it shareable only to those who have a link to it or keep it private if I want to use it only um, in my own teaching of it. So I'll make this uh, model yeah. collection class, public. Yeah, yeah. yeah and if you're, if you're a student as well. Mm -hmm. So I added a resource, and you see the resource has been added to your collection. Um, and now, over in the right-hand corner of my screen, I see this air quality research little tab. Um, these are all of the collections that I've created, and you can kind of toggle down and see all of my content within there. Um, a new feature that we just released is also called the, the profile view. So if I click on my name, I can also see all of the collections um, in my profile view as well. Nice. And so this is another, uh, this is the digital portfolio, so to speak, of, of all of my work. And um, this is shareable with this link directly. I can um, put it on Facebook or Twitter or email this link out directly. Nice. So, um, yeah, my, my students can come and search me as Tim Burke and see all of the collections that I've made uh, publicly available in Guru. Mm -hmm. Or I could put it on a Youth Voices profile too, right? You can put it on a Youth Voices. You can embed that. Anybody's profile. You can embed your work. <laughs> so now I'm here in in the edit mode of this um, air quality research. And let's say I looked around in Guru and found some other stuff. And let's say I want to add in. Maybe we have this other video here. And I can I can search for that, or um, I can look for something. And go back to search here and continue kind of building resources in. I could drag drag it over and and kind of build it. If I want to connect it to lung disease and how that might impact or um, the rates of asthma, kind of the resource that you find uh, within Guru. But then I'll jump back to edit mode and let's say it didn't have an article that I wanted to post in there. Um, I can click this feature, add resource and bring in articles from the web. So I'm going to switch my screen and, and tell me if it, if it connects. Here's a New York Times um, You're good. Sci yep. science page on air pollution. So let's say I, I like this air pollution chronology right here. Mm -hmm. And I want to take that resource or an article here, and then I want to take that. I can take this hyperlink, up this, and then I can come back to Guru, and I can insert that. Um, guru. So I'm now able to take other resources from the web or even ones that I've uploaded myself and add them into my collection. So I think Chris, a, um, a key point there is to say now we have all that content, well how are we going to put in a forum for collaboration around that? Um, mm -hmm. And maybe that's where my Crocodoc tool can come into play. I might go to Crocodoc, another free tool, and go into my own account, and Crocodile is a tool that allows articles or websites, um, Word docs or PDFs, and upload them to the web, and allow students to over to write on those resources um, and, in a sense, collaborate. And if you haven't checked it out, I I highly suggest all listeners out there to look at Paul Allison's work on Lincoln and what he did uh, in his classroom, getting students to think uh, around what they were going to be viewing in the upcoming film Lincoln. So I have oh, this is another free tool, Crocodile. I have all of these resources in there. 
Um, this one's not related, uh, Chris, but I'll just go ahead and take this, uh, let's say, reading comprehension skills list and very bright resource. And I could go in and with Crocodoc, I can make comments and say, uh, read through, etc. cetera. And then again, copy that link back to Guru and add that resource to my collection um, from the web. And now I have here an article that I just uploaded. It could be a newspaper review or um, primary source documents around Beijing air pollution over time. And it allows students to um, then have a task at hand. So it's not just going from receiving information within Guru, but then to going and doing. So clicking on that in the resource mode and um, entering their thoughts and their opinions. So um, what I'm most excited from that project-based kind of collaborative work is when the students are creating collections for one another. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's essential that you, you co-develop a rubric for them. Uh, they need to be exposed to Guru and understand what learning with digital resources is like and kind of have a sense of what they like and what they don't like. I think it would be important for the class to think about, well, how many resources should we have in the collection? Should it be studyable within one 45-minute block or something um, over time that you, know, you study at, on a weekly basis or you study at home? Um, this part right here is, is a fun tool within where you can go in and customize how you want your students to use that resource. So I can say, so. Yep, so Tim is typing right now. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just narrate when you type. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> so you can go in and narrate how you want your students to think about um, that resource. So on this quiz, I want you to pay attention to this. And I could update that there. I could say, let's say this is an article. Um, Mm-hmm. And again, teachers or students could do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it, it works best when students have an email account set up through the district. Uh, if you're Google Apps for Education District, you can access wow. Guru. I was right going to mention that. I've done that, by the way. Yeah. I, yeah, it's yeah, a great I've, tool. Yeah. So, so you can again, you can, if, you, if you're Google Apps for Education, you can go in and find Guru in the, what is it, the store? Uh, under the More tab? Yeah. <laughs> So I can click and I can see Guru yeah. and click on it for the first time and automatically have an account created. Yeah. That's that's the same as your uh, Google username. Right. Of course, you'll have to have the um, the administrator of the Google Apps domain set that up. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's it's a pretty simple step, and right. you can find that from our uh, community page. Yeah. Even if your administrator hasn't set that up, though, you can just sign in with Google really easily. Right. Just sign in with the Google button, which is definitely the simplest way to sign up, especially if you're trying to get your students to sign in. So a new user, a new student could just, there's a button, because I already signed in um, a while ago, so it, it says sign in with Google, I guess, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So um, then that, that, that collection can be published, so to speak. I think Youth Voices is a great way to, to submit it. Uh, if your school uses an LMS tool, that collection can be submitted on their uh, Google uh, site is another way for students to publish that work. And in this project I did at a school, the, the students in this rubric were supposed to write uh, very specific questions, uh, find resources that were age appropriate. They had to uh, review the quality of that resource, whether it was visually appealing, whether the flow of the collection made sense with what we agreed upon as a class. Mm. And then they um, entered their feedback into that resource as well. So the students would choose. They chose three collections that they were interested in based on the title, not by who created it. Uh, this was a middle school class, so if it was like Paul was creating it, we all love Paul, we'd all study Paul's work. But rather, mm. Paul was making a collection on um, Beijing's air pollution, and I was curious about that. I could ch click on his collection and study that, and then answer his questions. Um, we have a new feature where you can add a quiz into Guru, so the students can take quiz questions right from within the collection. And I'll see here, we have two features currently are on multiple choice and true-false. And I'm very excited, in two weeks we will sort of have a short answer uh, response. Oh, yeah, so it really helps support the Common Core initiative around explaining your work, uh, typing up your answer, and um, you know, citing it with evidence. So 
that's another cool feature. So, Tim, you, it sounds like you could go on for a while, which is fine, but maybe we could get feedback and questions yeah. at this point. Chris, That'd did you have any yet? Or? <laughs> yeah, I just had a quick one. So when you say publish it out, um, what does it look like? I guess I would play with it and look like it, but, you know, just a quick... Thing uh, like it publishes as, as as slides or like a presentation or um, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, can you guys see back to my screen? I, I yes, we're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, it, this is a collection. Um, I don't know who made it. Um, pretty popular one though. Uh, no, this was something that um, I that Paul did, and I kind of remixed here. This was the this is the link that the students would see. So this is the student facing version oh. of that, Chris. And they could navigate uh, with this navigation bar up here. So they always want to check out how many resources are in there. And this one's <laughs> quite a beast. We have a lot of content in in this. Which and then is the students, which is an important question, by the way. Which mm -hmm. go ahead. yeah yeah. And and what Paul, the way in which you use this is you said here are five or six uh, articles that review this recent film, Lincoln. Choose three of them which I think is always huge, giving students choice, and review them um, within this document. So this resource is uh, an example of how Crocodoc looks. And Paul copied and pasted the New York Times or the Daily Beast article reviewing Lincoln, and the students went in here and they made their comments along the line. So I can see what Dean thinks about this or what Aaron's thinking. And that how that collaboration feature works. And so this is a live... Um, site. If I want to go in and make a comment and comment on Dean's work, I see I'm signed in as T Burke, and I could say, Dean, I agree. Paul, I won't mess with that. It's part, okay. But. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all right. Um, no, so, Chris, I, I, that, I, I, that would be shared out. Yeah. And the, yeah. Just a just a, a technical note on on the absolutely, if people want to sign up for Crocodoc, they should. Um, if your students are using Youth Voices already, um, mm -hmm. there's a link on the membership page to a Youth Voices folder that is totally open and anybody can drop anything in there that they want to. They don't have to be logged in or anything to do that. So, and you know, that's a risk I suppose, but um, but it's uh, it, it hasn't been a problem. And, and what you'll see there is a, an amazing list of quote-unquote hot topics that we were talking about earlier that the students have been researching. So that's that's a way that's where I it's, it often start with students when they find something, and then crafting the, you know, the the, the guru thing later happens a little bit later, I think. But anyway, so that's yeah. my and 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 worth mentioning. Vialogs works the same way. Vialogs dot org, I think. Mm -hmm. I A L O G U S works for video that way. Kids can annotate video and then put that oh, cool. annotated version into a guru collection. Um, and uh, I think Tim, you mentioned uh, all the uh, webmaker stuff on um, yeah the popcorn mainly also. mainly uh, yeah popcorn mm -hmm. popcorn, popcorn what is it called popcorn uh, something popcorn movie maker yeah yeah whatever it's, yeah or popcorn I, maker it's that webmaker Mozilla Mozilla's webmaker so so that's also a really nice um, kind of I've been I, I this summer I use I use that popcorn tool. For annotating, right? Oh, <laughs> which cool. is which is like really really boring on some level because of all the amazing things you can do. Mm -hmm. It's basically you know you you put the media in and then you can add anything on top of it. Um, but I just had kids text to annotate <laughs> the um, the video as as it was playing and then it pops up. And just a, a quick example. Um, so, so it adds an, a time element to the annotation, which is really oh. fun because. Yeah. One girl wrote, for example, oh, cool, and then five seconds later says, really cool. <laughs> Three <laughs> seconds later says, OMG, cool. Right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of see um, that time element. Added. Anyway, so, but, but it does seem like a, an interesting decision point for making these collections is, is the collection a resource for gaining information, at, or is it a resource for interacting with that information? Um, and I guess those do overlap, mm -hmm. um, but it does seem like an interesting thing to have kids think about, right? I don't know. I love putting tools in um, to my collection 
so that they can see each other's data and their thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, we did something using a Google form uh, and this had the mm -hmm. students sign up using an, um, an acronym. And they went through and they took the form, and, you know, it was about five short quiz questions. But then in the following resource, we put the data, which usually is designed for the creator, the teacher, and we put that in as a resource, and the student were able to track their data versus their peers, and kind of created this co-opetition, this kind of I want to know where I'm at type thing, and um, allowed them to interact with each other in the learning process. And then we set group goals around if 80% of the students uh, scored proficiency on this short quiz, then we would, you know, do this. And, um, but then there's other great tools, I think, like poll, polling tools, like Poll Everywhere or other kind of little quiz things that shows where your peers are at and how they agree with certain concepts is always a fun way to weave that social side into the learning of the content. Mm -hmm. What do you guys yes. think? Um, I mean, for like for the seniors this year and creating their their collections for their best resources. So Chris, how I see it when I'm starting to work with it with the students on something like a group project, it feels like they, the collection they start initially would be more like a working bibliography because the kids love, they could spend two hours and they can collect a hundred gazillion resources mm -hmm. that they think initially are valuable, right? And then they start to cull them as they go through them. And then what they actually publish, say, on their Youth Voices would be their, their work cited. Basically everything that was the best that they use and it's in their paper. Where I see it, the, Paul, where you're talking about the interaction part is where, and as a school, as a department, even today we're talking about it moving into now aligning, vertically aligning our research projects so that ninth is doing a little bit, then 10th build, then 11th build, then they get to 12th, and it's not so enormous for them. Mm -hmm. And how do then the 12th graders use, not use, teach the freshmen? So how can we start using these collections that the 12th graders are using for their equity topics? The, the freshmen then can use it because they're, they're also working on equity topics just at a different level. You know, but they're seeing what the seniors are doing, what the juniors are doing, what the, you know, and it just, it, it, it gets to the point where by, I don't even know what it could look like by the time they've uh, gone all the way to senior year, I mean years down the road, five, um, you know, they're building on the or collection seven. too. Okay. Or seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, wish, I wish it was next year. But so, so <laughs> I see that that like, it's going to grow from, from one student, they have, they're working collection. Then they publish it because it's their finest collection on this one topic, say, like one of my students, a secondhand clothing trade. If a student in the 9th, 10th, and 11th grade is looking at, you know, anything dealing with uh, charity, et cetera, like, they can access that collection. Then they get this idea of what, the, what, what is a collection they start to build their own. And then where you're talking about, Tim, where you're adding tools that they can then use, um, that's the part where we're really trying to get this, the students to teach the students at this point. Um, mm -hmm. How do we get our 12th to teach our 11th to teach our 10th and then our 9th? Um, and there's a lot of momentum behind that. We have a, we have a very strong, uh, motivated department right now that wants to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's we'll great. See. And I, I would add, while we're on the subject of research, um, I, one of the reasons why I think Guru can be a useful tool for research, especially for younger grades, is because of the filtered search. I know it's it's yeah. not um, it's mostly around core subjects, so it's not um, as expansive as we'd like it to be especially when we're talking about current events. But if you're talking about, um, especially lower grades, talking mm -hmm. about curriculum that's being taught in, um, you know, mainstream math, science, social science, English language arts, uh, a lot of what we designed there was designed to just create a safe space for um, kids to do internet research. Mm -hmm. research. Um, so I just wanted to make that little plug right there. That's true. I, can I, and, and can I add to that dialogue around the... Like, I, I, we called them hot topics earlier. You just said current events. Um, I think there's uh, some other category, and, and I don't know how to identify it, mm -hmm. but a, a, a young woman this summer uh, wanted to investigate perfectionism, right, which, which is an issue in her own life, right, wow. and, and connects to her sort of religious upbringing and, and so forth. Um, but then as she researched it, you know, she found that there was a lot of psychological research. and So it wasn't necessarily a current event, mm -hmm. but it isn't a topic that's normally talked about in school. Mm -hmm. you know, but, and it's a topic 
but it has a lot of academic connection and personal connection. Sure. So you know, mm -hmm. so I don't know what to call those topics, but <laughs> interspace topics is is, is mm -hmm. one, one good word. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, that's that's an area where um, the community of Guru is really going to be the people the, the the one factor that expands it beyond you know the cut and dried K twelve content into the areas where you know actual human interest lies. So mm -hmm. students who are making uh, collections or teachers who are making collections on something like perfectionism that brings that whole sphere of human knowledge into Guru so that the next person who searches for, searches for perfection they'll find that already, they'll find that trail of breadcrumbs has already been laid. Um, yeah. that's, and that, that's something that really we depend on the community to help us um, expand. Right. Right. Joe, if I could build also on what you just said, and I was thinking about the, um, the art of curation, right? mm -hmm. um, and I was talking with a new art teacher who I'll be working with this year, um, and, and trying to tease out with him what the habits of mind or the learning competencies or whatever go through all of the projects that he has built up over the years. Um, and, and at one point he said it's curating. Mm -hmm. um, like I show kids all this stuff and then at some point as they're working on their projects they, they say okay I really want to look at this artist, this artist, and this work. Like they curate cert a certain subset of mm -hmm. things, right? So I think that's what Guru can do to some right. degree. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that like you drop everything into a, a like this is everything I found folder yeah. maybe. Mm. And then but at some point you select out of that and say, okay, we're gonna curate out of this mm. what what because is most you're, meaningful to my project? Yeah. And not only just most meaningful to my project, if the intent is that you're supposed to educate the the younger ones about that topic. See, I was thinking that that was a third folder though. <laughs> oh god. But, yeah. Um, but I don't know. But yeah. I, well, mm, and, and I when I you. yeah, but when we also think about hot topics, I I kind of mean them more mm. like it's it's because the the issue, the equity issue, has not changed, and that to me is yeah. the the value in this in you know I have a senior that you know from two thousand four had they had a collection up there about uh, you know prostitution in the Fruitvale district where our school is located. You know that then you have how many years worth of students after that from 2004 that could look at what's happened and and what I love about the research topics is that they we force them to really identify something that's new so no kid can ever do the same exact topic that's why we're so we make them be so specific about it I guess I just I I, I mean a topic that they can see that not much has changed so then the onus of wanting to change it and doing something different that year related to it uh, in mm. their field work, then that, then mm -hmm. it's there. Cause, and then yeah. that artifact becomes an artifact, right? It's, it's something yeah. that, that was, right. that was the perspective from this student living in yes. Fruitvale in 2004. Yes. And that's, that's news, right? That's mm -hmm. pr primary source better than anything else that they can go and right. find, you know, online. So. And the kids, when we can provide them, right? We can give them all these resources that we think would give them the connections to whatever topic we're studying. But I feel like some, the kids come back and they show me the things. They post it on their Facebook, and I'm always like, wow, why didn't I? I wish I had had that yeah. image that, what, you know, when I was teaching it. That would have been so much better. Right. Mm -hmm. And I do it. I mean, I steal afterwards, but, but the kids are very good at finding things mm -hmm. that I, I wouldn't even know existed. So Yeah, they are. <laughs> Which so, is scary and, and, and inspiring at the same time. Yeah. And getting to the technology, there will be more collaboration added. Um, that's on your timeline, right? But but yeah. in the meantime, in the meantime, we we if if students make available our, their their collections, we can we can sift through their collections and say these three would be great for the whole class to do on air quality, for example, Chris. Yeah. Getting back to you, so they could have subtopics that they're working on in air quality. But then you could make another collection that's sort of the class collection, mm -hmm. and and just just that. So I'm I'm thinking that one of the shifts that many of us are at already, but many teachers aren't at, is that we think of technology as something to produce something at the end, mm -hmm. and learning to use computers to build and make and think along the way, yeah. I think is a big deal here and. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think that's part of what we're we're proposing 
uh, or ideas for how to use Guru in a, in a kind of different mm -hmm. way that way. So, yeah. It, yeah, publishing it is great, but it, just the mere collection and, and yeah. selecting within the collection is an important process, I think. Yeah, Leah, are you yeah. are you channeling uh, your Dan Russell thoughts uh, right now? <laughs> yeah, uh, what, absolutely. What were you thinking, Leah? Good. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we part of uh, part of our, our workshop, and then also um, I did early in the year is information literacy and curating is a big a big component of that. I'm fascinated with the curating um, topic that we're you know talking about right now, and Dan Russell is the guru of. <laughs> Google G research. G U R U. <laughs> or no, maybe and, he's the original G O O R U. Yeah, he's the O G. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, he he's what's great. He has built these modules, these searching modules, and so I just turned on, turned that on to the teachers, and we followed one of his challenges. And at first, and what we do as part of it is, I have the teachers work together, and really be mindful of how they're collecting, like what kind of search terms are they using, and even. How are they writing it down? Are they using a pad of paper and pencil? Are they opening a Word doc? And mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, the conversations, and it gets teachers, it gets us just thinking about our process. And, um, and then what would you do with students? And would you just, mm -hmm. and part of it is, you know, as teachers, and I know that this was a mindset that I had for years, was when I would come up with lessons, I always had a procedure. Okay, first you're going to do this, and then really moving away from a procedure to saying, Here's just uh, the parameters, and think about your own process in learning, and really that's what the, the learning is, and then how do you tweak and refine that, and I have them work together so that they can see what that other person is doing as well, and how they affect each other in that process. So, you know, one person might say, um, well, I'm going to choose this keyword, and then the other person, well, why would you choose that? I would choose it like this, or I would say it this way, and then they, that conversation in itself we talk about, and we talk about how did you capture that, you know, write that down, even that. So, um, yeah, it's uh, that, that doing that workshop with Andrew and Tim, um, it was great. I, that was the best part, was having the teachers talk about afterwards what was the process like for you and how did you capture it along the way. And right. that's when actually, you know, that's when teachers were talking about, hey, I use Evernote or, you know, people were saying some of the stuff that they use that, you know, oh, I didn't hear about that. What, tell me more about that. And so it just gave, gave to more opportunity, again, of talking about process. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, could you say what that resource was, though? Was it... Daniel or David Russell? Or Dan I, Russell. If you Dan just Russell. Google Dan Russell, you'll get to his blog. And on his blog, which is fabulous, he has all kinds of uh, resources. Um, but you want to go to his search modules. And it, he has one that's on power searching and just regular Google searching. And you literally go through, and the kids, they're appropriate for kids, I would say 6th through 12th grade, maybe some 4th and 5th graders. Um, and is Google Chris, involved in that or not? Yes. Um, Guru, in a sense, you can go to Guru and find that that same resources yeah. <laughs> curated a little bit uh, for okay. that particular workshop. Uh, yeah. But but no, I mean, Guru is kind of um, a, a baby step towards this big world of Google search and. Um, yeah. 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 I well, you know what I I was saying that the community is what's wonderful about Guru. What I think is also wonderful is that it can play as a a a small piece in in larger collections of work that we're doing together. So I think that's an important aspect of the tool as well. So a collection of small pieces is what many of us kind of feel like is the best way to go because as you improve your tool, you know, it connects up with other tools that keep getting improved and, and so yeah. that's, a, that's a really good thing to have. Chris, did you have all your questions answered? I did, yeah, that's good. I mean now... Um, we just need to actually get going on it. It's our second day of school, so we were talking about it, and so um, there. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. Great. Chris, if you want us to webinar in, by all means, feel free to right. invite us, and uh, okay. we'll let them know the human end of of this Guru search engine. Okay. Yeah. I did want to mention also in emails collecting this group of wonderful people together. Uh, Tim and Leah, you mentioned a teacher who had put together a Japanese internment um, collection. Is that correct? Can you? Yeah, David Braden. Yeah, 
Play is Dean. Okay. So, so we'll just reference that. <laughs> and, yeah, great collection. Uh, and, and we'll put it in the notes to the show. And, yeah. Um, and we'll kind of... Or, or can you say something quickly about it? <laughs> yeah, I did call him, but I don't... That's okay. I just yeah. um, Tim, you worked more directly with him. Yeah, yeah. David. Yeah. Okay. David's looking to. He was another um, participated in this Common Core designed unit uh, and has taken what was a, a standard unit taught in, I believe, fourth grade, and kind of put that online in Guru and used tools like Google Docs and other collaborative tools, uh, videos from that time, images for the students to sift through and uh, understand. Uh, the point of view of, of a Japanese American um, and the pro the experience they went through during that internment period. And then using that collection as a piece, I believe, is going to build up to Socratic discussion or Socratic seminar around a, a role play activity in class. Um, so, yeah, and that's, that's on there for other teachers to see that's and cool. uh, improve upon. And it's uh, what's being really taught in Oakland right now or this school year, this upcoming year. So okay. worth mentioning again, um, both the, um, I think there might be a, a little glitch right now, but eventually it'll be really easy to copy from somebody's resource into your collection. Like if you see a resource you love and you want to put it into your collection, that'll be easy to do. And it's easy to, to copy other people's collections, entire collections, and then delete stuff and add stuff of your own and kind of recreate. So that, that kind of iterative process is, is great mm -hmm. that Guru has. Yeah, the plus button is there, and you can add it to your collection or, or take someone else's work and improve upon it and iterate upon that, um, mm -hmm. kind of building upon each other's work, not reinventing the wheel. Um, I would give a quick plug, Paul, before we, we, we head out, uh, some yeah. upcoming features. So in two weeks, we'll have the short answer response coming in. Um, into our 5.7 release. And then we do sprints, we're called sprints subsequently every two weeks. And um, there'll be some quiz tracking that gets started. This quarter, we're going to be rolling out the data analytics uh, insights dashboard so that teachers can see how their students are studying their work, which resources uh, they're studying the most. Um, and then another feature that mm -hmm. comes out is uh, called folders. And so I gave you a quick glimpse of what my profile page would look like with all my collections. But now I want to be able to organize that into various folders. And so the first folder for a student might be uh, just research collections. And then the next folder is um, uh, outfacing collections to get feedback on. And then the final folder is my final projects that I've published, it, uh, published on Youth Voices. And so you'll, teachers will have flexibility in customizing those folders. If you look on Guru right now, you can see that feature uh, in three content partners between Autodesk, which has great um, math and science um, STEAM collections. Uh, for students and teachers to use in their classroom, uh, Lessonopoly and the Foundation for Teaching Economics. And they uh, are all examples of that um, uh, folder capacity within Guru. So some other things are coming. Uh, upload, uh, we're going to add a social side to it where you'll be able to add reactions and um, give feedback, kind of the chat rooms. And those are stuff later down, down, the, down the line. And Paul, I also know the collaboration feature right now is, is, is on your dire list. I'm fighting for it every day. And Chris, that's a tool that uh, once that functionality is in there, students can be co-creating a collection at the same time. Um, in the meanwhile, they can publish and then copy and then add to and then publish again. Or they can have one uh, group account as well. Um, and by all means, let me know how I can support with that. Cool. So. And by yeah. the way, the, a workaround around publishing, you can't iterate after it's published. Is that still true? You can't you can. add anything? You can't? Uh, you can't. Yeah, you can, and um, it okay. just the newest the newest um, update would be there. You just click refresh. Oh, good. Refresh, and it'll, it'll be right Is that in there. New? Okay, yeah. I think so. Cool. Very so, cool. Much. So, so much. So we all, <laughs> we do have to go here. Thank you all for hanging in here and uh, starting this conversation. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And continue. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we want to mention that uh, we've been broadcasting here over the EdTech Talk um channel of the World Bridges Network. And uh, we'll be up and uh, back to our regular time next uh, week at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I'm happy, hoping to have a, um, a group of students who are in a Youth Voices Summer Program 
with us um, next week. So awesome. that'll be awesome. fun to, to cool. meet those, those nice. young people. Um, and we want to thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier for setting up uh, all of this at um, Ed Tech Talk, uh, part of the World Bridges Network. Talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.